Hey everyone, it's Bob Crossan, the editorial director for Endeavor Business Media's Water Group and also the editor-in-chief of Wastewater Digest. I'm joined today by Larry Lee. He is product manager for Veolia Water Technologies. We're going to be talking a little bit about wastewater intensification and how you can kind of achieve that at different stages of the wastewater treatment process. So, Larry, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Thank you, Bob. So, why don't we start more broad with wastewater intensification? Can you explain a little bit like what what do we mean by wastewater intensification and then we can talk a little bit about what that means within certain different processes that I know that you guys um have some offerings for yeah so uh wastewater treatment or process intensification uh in a broad sense refers to the use of non-conventional processes to achieve more in less with less for example uh, increase treatment capacity or improve effluent quality within a given reactor volume, or decrease energy or chemical consumption, increase energy production, or reduce system footprint, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, these intensification processes provide more economic, environmental, and sometimes even social and health benefits over conventional processes. Gotcha. So when I, I like I said, you can kind of do this at different parts of the the treatment process. I think a lot of folks are very familiar with uh, the activated sludge process. If we're thinking about intensification within that element of a treatment plant, how what what, what does that look like? What does it look like to intensify wastewater in the activated sludge process? Yeah, so there are quite a few uh, technologies you can use to uh, intensify an existing activated sludge process. For example, IFAS, MABR, MBR, to name a few. Uh, mm -hmm. The in integrated fixed film activated sludge process, aka IFAS, is one of the most commonly used uh, intensification process here in the U.S. As a matter of fact, the U.S. has both the world's first and the largest IFAS systems. So the first being the uh, Broomfield, Colorado plant, uh, which was installed back uh, in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And the largest plant is uh, uh, the Fields Point plant in Rhodes Island that has a capacity that's close to uh, 80 MGD. The technology basically um, adds more biofilm biomass to an existing activated sludge system through media carriers. And uh, this converts the activated sludge process from a single sludge system to a two sludge system. So you have both uh, activated sludge and biofilms. Those are the two sludges mm. in the system. And these add the biofilm biomass or labor force, if you will, helps the system achieve either more capacity or better effluent quality or more consistent performance, or it can convert a se secondary treatment plant with just the BOD nitrification to a biological nutrients removal plant with both nitrogen removal and phosphorus removal. Okay. So I know... I know deammonification is another thing. What what about that? What what type of technology would assist with deammonification, and what would the resulting outcome be in in that case? Yeah, so deammonification is definitely one of those intensification processes when it comes to a nitrogen removal. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, it can save a hundred percent on carbon consumption, and up to sixty percent on uh, aeration energy consumption. Also, it can provide significant savings on uh, alkalinity demand while achieving much higher nitrogen removal to you know higher nitrogen removal rates in smaller reactor volumes compared to conventional nitrification and denitrification processes. However, the biggest challenge of this technology uh, is the retention of the Animox bacteria. So the animox of bacteria are the magic bugs that are doing all the magic work. And if they get washed out from the reactors, the process will be upset, right? Mm -hmm. So fortunately, the Nidamox system we offer can assist, uh, can assist with that. It uses a proven, um, effective, and secure animox bacteria retention system that minimizes the potential of animox washout. 
Uh, it is a media and a screen system that has been used in more than a thousand similar systems in the past three decades, and it requires minimal maintenance and energy consumption. It not only keeps the bugs uh, happy and safe within the reactors, but also makes it one less thing for the operators to worry about during long-term operation. Mm -hmm. there, now, there are some folks also who use uh, BAF or uh, biological aerated filters, um, but there are some intensification options r related to that as well. Um, could you speak to the, the, the intensification when it comes to BAF and, and, and what that looks like as well? Yes. So the biological aerated filters combine biological treatment and also solid separation in one unit. Basically, you're getting rid of uh, those giant and bulky secondary clarifiers that you normally see in an activated sludge process. Plus, the volumetric loading and uh, removal rates of the BioSteer Duo technology that we offer is not only a lot higher than the activated sludge system, but it is also higher than our first generation BioSteer technology. Uh, the Duo, as the name implies, it combines MBBR and the conventional biosteer, uh, further increasing the biological capacity and hydraulic throughput of the system. So these intensification functions help significantly reduce the total system footprint compared to conventional activated sludge processes. Uh, the biosteer dual system can shrink the footprint of a typical activated sludge process by up to 75%. Mm -hmm. It can also shrink the footprint of a conventional biosteer system by up to 40%. Uh, last but not least, the biosteer dual system provides a more, more automated operating experience, much cleaner and healthier operating environment for the operators, and much less impact on the communities that live around the plant. For example, if you live around a activated sludge plant, chances are you, you will probably um, smell the odor as, at times. Mm. But with the biosteer system, um, the wastewater will be fully enclosed in the cell. When you see the water, it'll be treated already. So you wouldn't be smelling as much odor as with a activated sludge plant. So there are more additional advantages with the biosteer dual system beyond just the process intensification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the the footprint I feel like is such an important thing that kind of I leads a little bit into into the cella technology as well. Uh, you, we've talked about this before with you about uh, the the footprint there, but when it comes to the intensification and how it serves that purpose, specifically MBBRs and and whatnot, how does that tech so that this cella technology that you guys ha have have um, been been talking about with us for a little bit here, how does that intensify the process as well? Yeah, thank you for mentioning Cella again. So we have uh, <laughs> covered this technology in a couple of other videos, but in general, Cella is our latest and greatest intensified MEBR technology. It uses the uh, bio-based Anox KC biofilm support material that has two to three times higher specific surface area than our HDPE-based Anox K series media, such as the K5 media. So this means a new MEBR technology um, that will either have even smaller reactor volume or can treat more capacity in a given volume than most of the conventional MEBR technologies in the market. Uh, plus, thanks to the uh, innovative bio process control mechanism, Cella will be able to use only two stages to achieve biological nitrogen and phosphorus removal compared to conventional activated sludge processes that would require three to five stages to do uh, the same VNR. And the uh, CELA doesn't use IMLR or RAS pumps for the saving on equipment and energy consumption. So CELA definitely becomes our latest addition to the intensification technology toolbox. Awesome. Well, Larry, thank you so much for talking with me and kind of sharing all these different ways that you can intensify wastewater, these processes to result in some positive outcomes for, for plants around the, around the country. And uh, we appreciate your time today. And for everyone who's watching, check out our video description below. We will have some links down there so you can learn a little bit more about these technologies and about wastewater intensification from Veolia Water Technologies.
Thank you, Bob. Appreciate the opportunity.